as, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I would never do anything to take away from those who have served our nation. The only thing I want to do is draw some parallels. Because you will be amazed at how similar they really are as far as a veteran serving our country and a Christian veteran in his service to the Lord. In these two short verses, I come up with four E words. Enlist, endure, engage, and entangle. And every single one of them represents some aspect of being a good soldier, a good veteran, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're going to look at all four of them, but I actually want to go to the last one and look at it first because it's in the last part of verse 4. I chose the word enlist to be a good veteran soldier for Jesus Christ. You got to enlist, you got to sign on the line. In your case, you have to go down after hanging out with Herman Banner for a while. Some of these will relate to that. And you have to sign on the line. You have to enlist. In the last part of verse 4, Paul speaks of the Christian veteran pleasing, what's this, him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Do you realize that if you are a child of God, you honor Him and serve Him. You do that because God chose you. Now, I don't want to get into predestination or anything like that. You know my feelings on that. I don't believe in it. I believe it's about choice. But God in His foreknowledge, knowing the choice you would make, chose you. He chose you. Now, we don't have a draft system back during Nam. We did. When you became 18, you went down and you signed up. I did. To be a part of the draft. Some were drafted, some weren't. Bob was, I wasn't. I don't understand that. It's just the way it happened. But even though we don't have a draft system now, all of the military, and I know this so well because we had a graduating senior in the family last year, all the recruiting officers really hit the high schools hard. They're out there providing opportunities in case these young people want to go into military, and many of them are. They're seeing that as a good way of life. For them. Here's the bottom line. Whether it be through the draft or whether a person chooses through recruitment, the bottom line is we must make a decision. We choose whether we're going to go into the military or not, and we choose as to whether we're going to serve in God's army or not. So we got to enlist. I want to encourage you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have never enlisted. He loves you. He wants you a part of His army. But He won't force you. He will draw you. 
He will love you, but He will not force you. The choice is yours. You got to enlist. You got to enlist. Second, you've got to endure. Endure. Every soldier in military and these who stood up here a moment ago would attest to that. They go through rigorous training. Difficult situations. Not only is there the physical aspect of running and climbing and doing everything else that they have to do. Not only those things, but there's the emotional trauma. There's the fact that you're separated from your family. Many times you're a long way from home. That's hard. You know, and, and Lord knows I would never want to forget those who have served in any war. But I guess because I'm of that era, I've thought so many times about young guys like Bobby, Terry, who went into Nam, And they were hundreds and hundreds of miles away from little old East Tennessee. And I don't know what that must have felt like, Bobby. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But it had to be harring. To be that far away and away from your family and sometimes be in a situation where you wouldn't hear from them because they couldn't contact you. Because a lot of times you were deployed in situations where they couldn't let anyone know actually where you were. That had to be harring. It's tough. Going into military. There's all kinds of situations that arise and you're confronted with on a daily basis and you adapt. You adapt. Paul said in the first part of verse 3 that the good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ endures hardness. We as children of God have no idea what the first century church faced. We have no idea. All you have to do is read in the book of Acts. And you get just a little inkling of an ideal of what they went through. We sit now in a very comfortable house of God. But folks, don't think for a moment that it's necessarily easy being a child of God. Because you're misunderstood and because the enemy at this point feels so easy, so accepted to make inroads into the Christian faith. Much of what Bobby was talking about a moment ago that we're having to do as far as a church to protect ourselves... That's coming because the enemy feels free now to get involved in the church. I wish they'd get in and get saved. They just want to get in and tear down. And just a few years ago, they wouldn't do that. And they feel free to now. And here's the sad thing. The sad thing is that they're making inroads in in leaps and bounds. One of the things that we praise God for, Angie, in Wednesday night prayer meeting, and it's probably in your bulletin, is that Tennessee went to the polls and we voted yes on one. <laughs> Doesn't take away a woman's right in any way. It protects the woman. It protects her. It means that those who are running these butcher mills 
are going to have to follow some guidelines now to protect that young woman. I praise God for that. I praise God for Angie that she's doing everything she can to share with them that there's a better choice to make. No one has said it's easy being a Christian soldier. We've got to endure hardness. But I promise you, it'll be the best endurance you ever make. You've got to enlist. You've got to endure. You've got to engage. Engage. Now, I said a moment ago, I, I, I was never in military. But I have so much respect. I, I walked across the stage, and I, I think we've been doing military uh, uh, Veterans Day things for years. And, and to me, I sensed and felt the presence of God more this day, I think, than anyone we've ever done. And I walked across in front of these who have served our country. And it was a great honor for me to take them by the hand and say thank you for your service. Many of them knew the rigors of hand-to-hand combat. They were engaged and trained to take on the enemy. And I'm afraid, here's a point where we miss the mark a little bit as children of God. We have sat back for years and we have played defense. We, we, we play defense. Defense is important. Whether it be in the sports arena, defense is important. But you've got to have some offense. There's got to be a balance. And I'm afraid that so long as children of God, we have played defense. You know what we do? We get in our churches and we feel comfortable here because the world out there is so mean and it's so vicious and we feel comfortable here and we play defense. The Word of God tells us to be offensive. And I don't mean to be rude. I'm not talking about that. The Word of God tells us we must go on offense. To engage means in the military that you go out there and you go after the enemy. If these military people would have gone to Da Nang or wherever they went, Korea, wherever they went. If they would have gone to these places and just holed up and huddled up somewhere and sat back and waited on, they would have been destroyed. No, they went over there and went to work. They engaged the enemy. We're expected to do the same thing as good Christian soldiers. How do we do that? Paul said, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4, he said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's not guns. and No. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And you know why I think that Amendment 1 passed? I think the people of God went before God and said, God, tell me what to do on this. And God told them what to do. I give Him all the honor, praise, and glory. Yeah. We've got to endure. We've got to enlist. We've got to engage. And, and finally, now all three of those are things we've got to do. The last one is something that we must not do. We must not get entangled. When you, when you serve this flag, you purpose in your heart that you will not allow anything to come between you and your service to this flag. Nothing. It has top priority because it represents the land that you love. God bless America. And you don't allow anything to come in between that. When you serve this flag, the Christian flag, the same thing is expected 
as Christian veterans, we must not allow anything, anything to come between our devotion to our Lord. Because as commodoring and demanding as, 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 as those sergeants and, and everyone who are in military, let me tell you something. We answer to one who is a lot higher than those, whether it be a five-star general, it doesn't matter. We answer to someone who's much higher. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for those who have served our country. And this has been a very emotional day for me. But my challenge for you, number one, if you are not in God's army, before you can be a veteran in God's army, you've got to get in. You've got to enlist. And if you've never done that, I mean, if there's never been a time in your life that you got away somewhere, just you and the Lord, and you did business with Him, you said, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, but I believe you love me. You died for me on a cross that my sins could be forgiven. I give my heart and life to you. I receive you as my personal. If you have never done that, never. Would you share that with me? I'll be back at the back. Would you do that? Would you share that with me? Because I would love to talk with you. I'd like to sign you up. I'm going to be a recruiting officer this morning, Bobby. I'd love to sign you up. You know what God needs? We've heard this a lot lately in the news. They talk about boots on the ground. You've heard that a lot. You know what God wants? He wants some boots on the ground out of us. So let's bow. If by some chance God has spoken to you today and you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, would you just by an upraised hand say, Pastor Ronnie, would you remember me? I've never enlisted in God's army. I don't know what I need to do. I'm one of those that would like to talk with you. Is there one anywhere? Just raise up your hand, take it back down. One anywhere? All right, I hope we are a consolidated marching army this morning based on that. Child of God, I challenge you to be a good soldier. Be a good soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be sure and tell our God Rod team and Brother Bobby and everyone who had such a part of making this so special this morning, how much you appreciate them. Let's stand very quietly. Keep your heads bowed and eyes are closed. Those of, uh, those of you who can, if you will help at the end of the service, we need to put uh, the stuff, the chairs back up on stage. If you can help with that, uh, help us when service is over. Also, those of you who are on the Benevolence Committee, I need to meet with you. We'll just meet back in, in the, the office there. Those on the Benevolence Committee, if I can meet with you for just a second as well. All right, so much to be thankful for. Let's bow and be dismissed in prayer. Harlan, God bless you, my brother. Thank you for your service along with these. And I know that you love America so much. It's not a doubt in my mind. Would you pass our benediction on this day and thank God for His presence?